In the second video of the series, we're going to look at the dynamics of a four bar crank rocker linkage with, with the schematic shown in here. We have a crank that can move, that can make full rotations, 360-degree rotations. L2 is uh, the name of the link, and the length is given by A. We have the coupler that connects the crank to the rocker, L3, with dimension B. And then we have this orange link, which is the rocker, makes rocking motion, L4, with dimension C. And then the ground is the one that connects the this pin, the pin between the, the crank and the ground, and the pin between the rocker and the ground, with, with link L1 and dimension D. Some of the dimensions are given in here. Uh, or all of the dimensions, link the dimension of the crank, the coupler, the rocker, and the ground, as well as the initial position of the rocker or the crank, which is 40 degrees. With those information, we can calculate the positions of the, um, the coupler and the rocker with the equations given in textbooks for kinematics or dynamics of machines. So with this information, let's go to working model and model this thing and analyze it. So in working model, the first thing I have to do, in my case, because a Windows update broke working model, I have to copy this line of code as a pause control for uh, my, my analysis so that working model pauses the simulation every few seconds, given by this number. I'm going to change it to 10, not 10 seconds, because otherwise when I click run, working model freezes. Next, I want to turn off gravity by going to gravity, click non from world over here. And so that the effect of gravity and weight and stuff do, do, do not affect my analysis. And finally, from view numbers and units, I want to change my units from SI to English pounds. And then with more choices, I can see that the distance are in inches, which is what we want. Positions or rotations are in degrees, which is also what we want and time is in seconds, and the rest of the units don't matter because we change, we turned off gravity, so mass does not have an effect, and we don't have any electrical charges or uh, electrical circuit here to worry about charge or potential uh, in, in this case. So with that, let's go on and create our model. The first thing we want to create is the ground, which is 10 inches in the horizontal direction. So I create, I click on this rectangle and create, create a rectangle. Right-click in this. And I purposefully made this very small because, as you can see, even that small one has a very large dimension, 45 inches in width and 5 inches in height, which is not what we want. So I changed the width to 10, zoom in further, and I want to change the height of this one to uh, 0.25. This is going to be the ground. And I'm going to delete it afterwards, but for now it's going to be acting as a guide. So I'm going to anchor it so it does not move anywhere. I want to create the crank, which, if you remember, is 4 inches long and at 40 degrees initial position. So let's create the, the crank from this end of the ground. Try to snap it as best as possible. And it does not like to snap. Right? And I don't know why it created this other rectangle. I'm going to delete this. And as you can see, we have a rectangle here, but they, they're not snapping as I wished. So if I right click on the crank and click on properties, properties, I see the, the Y coordinate of that one. I can, uh, first of all, I'm going to change the height of the the ground to the height of the uh, the crank so this is 0.225 this is 0.25 I'm going to change it to 0.225 and then I want to change the y coordinate of the ground to the y coordinate of the the, the crank so this is this value and then I'm going to click on the ground and then I'm going to change that to this now I can see that these, this snapping has been done properly. So I'm going to pen this end of the crank, which is the, the pen between the crank and the ground. Now I'm going to move on to create the next link, which is going to be the coupler. And that should snap right here. 
So another rectangle, going from here, and trying my best. It almost snapped once and it does not want to snap anymore, which is a problem that I have encountered with, uh, with working model several times. So let me try again. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to try once more. And again, this is something that I have encountered a few times with working model. All right. So this time it snapped. I'm going to pin the, the coupler, which is this one, and the crank, which is the other link right next to it, in here. And then I'm going to change. First of all, let me see if I changed the, the OK. I made this mistake earlier, too. Uh, I'm going to have to move this and actually delete it. I need to give zero degrees for the dimension of the crank and change its length to four inches. Okay, that's something I should not forget. And I have to try to make the coupler once again and try to snap which did this time, that's good. And then I can pin the coupler, which is this link, to the crank. Now I can change the dimension of the, uh, the coupler from 0.68 to 12 inches. Let's make sure that's 12. Yes, B is 12. So that is taken care of if I zoom out. And let's try to zoom in this window. It doesn't want to zoom. These are some of the issues that we run into when we're trying to use working model because it's a pretty old program and it does not always want to work like the modern programs written for Windows. And like I said, also a Windows update broke working model uh, on my computer so it freezes a lot so all right we have this these links uh, created now what I want to do now that I have pinned the crown crank to the ground and the coupler to the crank I want to give the initial position for the crank which is 40 degrees let's go back to this picture theta 2 is 40 degrees so let's change this 0 to 40 and because I don't want the crank to rotate anywhere when I change the dimensions or the rotations of the, the coupler, I'm going to temporarily anchor the, ca the crank and give the initial position of the coupler, which is 20.30 degrees. So if I click on here, in the position or the properties, I can change this to 20.3 degrees. And again, I want to temporarily anchor the coupler so that when I make more changes to my model it does not rotate or move from its position. So finally I have to create the coupler which is or the rocker which is 10 inches actually 8 inches long and at 57.33 degrees. So again I'm going to zoom into the ground and try to snap the uh, the rocker to this end of the ground which it snapped which is what I wanted so let's pin the crank the, the rocker first and then change its values so the width is going to be 8 inches and then the angle is 57.33 so 8 for the width and 57.33 for the dimension. So if we have done our job right, we'll see that the, the crank and, I mean, actually the coupler and the rocker will have to meet right here. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to pin these two. And at this point, we're ready to get rid of some of the temporary considerations we had made. So the first thing I want to delete is this and this anchor. 
and then I want to delete my ground so that is done let's save this before we move on uh, the same location as before and this time we have a crank rocker linkage let's change some of the uh, the appearance properties of these links so I'm gonna right click on the crank go to appearance change the color to let's say green and change the name to crank click on the coupler change it to let's say orange name it a coupler and click on the rocker and change its name to rocker and I want to close everything else save it now I have to give a source of motion to my uh, model so I'm going to remove this pen and replace it with a motor and if I right click on the motor I can see the properties and I can change its values in the previous video we, we made it a uh, uh, velocity in this case I'm going to change it to acceleration and give it a small acceleration of 5.5 .5 degrees per uh, per second squared and I want to save it so I'm going to zoom a little bit out so we can see exactly what this thing does and I'm going to click run and after 10 seconds it should stop so this is the acceleration input to my model in 10 seconds and if I do again it's gonna go a few more okay so it's actually making several rotations so this is good my model works properly I can reset that now I want to do after I zoom out a little bit let's move this a little further here I can try to export some uh, dynamic behavior or dynamic responses from this uh, uh, linkage so first thing I want to do is to go to view numbers and units go to my choices and change the rotations from degrees to radians now because I want to output velocities and accelerations in radians per second and radians per second squared and click on the crank go to measure and get the position all of the position information and I can move this to here click on uh, let's do all the positions first and then velocities and accelerations in that order so position of the the coupler and then position of the rocker let's move them a little bit further right because I don't want the uh, the motion of the coupler go underneath these uh, measurements so let's go back to the crank in this case measure the velocity all the components of velocity then go back to the coupler and measure the velocities of the coupler and then in the rocker I can also measure the velocities of the rocker in the crank I can measure the acceleration of the crank all the components the accelerations of the coupler and then I can also measure the accelerations of the uh, the rocker All right let's save this let's click run and as you can see the calculations are being made in here um, and the acceleration of the the angular acceleration of the the crank is constant click run more time one more time so that we can see the ro rotation of this crank uh, or the linkage and uh, that should be enough so if I reset this and right click and do copy and one of these nine calculations and go to Excel I can paste everything in here so I have the position of the crank position of the 
coupler positions of the rocker then I have the velocities of the three links crank coupler and rocker and then I have the accelerations of the crank coupler and rocker in that order in the order in which we uh, can we, we made the uh, measurements I'm going to save this in that same folder that we had before let's go to documents and here let's call it crank rocker save it so I can get back to it later for further analysis I'm going to show one video in one video how you can use this Excel information to so do some uh, post processing and also in a previous video I showed you how to convert this into a, a video file that you can put in your presentations and slides so in this video we looked at the dyna dynamic analysis of a crank rocker four bar linkage how do you use guidelines and stuff to create this linkage you give a motor in this case we give accelerations to the motor in the previous video I, I gave a velocity so we can uh, see the effect of uh, zero acceleration or a constant acceleration on the dynamic behavior of a crank rocker linkage.